Hi friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. My name's Jennifer, and as you can see, today we're in my garden. Um, this is my very early spring garden. We don't have too much growing right now, um, but we're gonna be changing that really soon. So today we're going to be talking about planting broccoli. Um, broccoli is, next to tomatoes, it's my favorite vegetable, I eat a lot of it. And so when I first started gardening, it was one of the vegetables that I really wanted to be able to grow. Um, but I discovered, like a lot of other gardeners, that broccoli is not the easiest vegetable to grow. It is definitely possible, but there are a few extra little tricks that you need to know um, to really be successful with broccoli. And I know that right now is not the ideal lighting. Um, it's a little bit, um, it's in the afternoon. The sun is a little bit bright right now, um, but we are getting a thunderstorm a little later. And so I had to do it now or not at all today. And my broccoli needs to get in the ground. So I hope you'll bear with me with a little bit of bright lighting that we have going on. So anyway, um, when it comes to broccoli, um, a lot of people have, at least I had, I'll say, I had two main problems with my broccoli. One was that it was very slow to grow and I never really got big heads. I would just get little, little bite-sized heads. And they were delicious, but it was basically one bite. And if you're gonna go through all the trouble of growing a plant and you're gonna allocate some space in your garden to that plant, you want to get enough of a harvest to really make it worth your while, to make it worth your time and your effort and um, giving it the space that you could be using to grow something else instead. The other problem that I had was cabbage worms. And these are these little green caterpillars. They love all brassica plants, especially broccoli. And um, we're gonna talk today about a way to prevent those because once I figured out how to prevent those caterpillars from getting on my plants and once I figured out how to get my broccoli to actually grow, I ended up actually being really successful with broccoli. So um, we're gonna get started. We're gonna plant some broccoli today. Um, I have over here in the bed to my left, we're gonna be putting 12 broccoli seedlings. Um, I, so I have 12 seedlings that I've started from seed. You could um, use seedlings that you started yourself. You could use seedlings from a nursery. Either way, um, so for me, it is about, it's the middle of April. It's about three to four weeks before my last frost date. And um, I've checked the forecast. Uh, we will most likely get another frost, but we shouldn't get any more severe frosts. And um, one thing I'm going to be doing when I plant the broccoli is I'll be putting a hoop tunnel over it. And we're just gonna be using insect netting to keep out the cabbage worms. But you could easily, if you get an unexpected, really cold night, you could easily go ahead and put a frost cover over that too. So anyway, so to get started, what you're going to need, you're going to need broccoli seedlings. So I have 12 broccoli seedlings here that I've started myself. You could definitely get um, broccoli seedlings from a local nursery instead. Um, and then we're going to need some soil amendments because broccoli is a really heavy feeder. And that is why I was having trouble um, with my broccoli not really growing very much with it um, just getting tiny little heads. One of the reasons was because I wasn't giving it enough nutrients. I put some compost down and that's a great start but it wasn't really enough. It's gonna be a little different for everyone. So you might wanna start with a soil test and see what you need. Um, broccoli is a really heavy feeder of nitrogen particularly. So if your soil doesn't have a lot of nitrogen in it, that is definitely something that you want to go ahead and amend. So this bed over here, last fall I amended it with a few inches of um, compost and then I covered it up with fallen leaves over the winter to kind of let the compost break down, to let the worms kind of incorporate it into the soil. Um, so that was how we started. And if you haven't done that, if you didn't do that last fall, you can go ahead and do that this spring. Um, and then the next thing that we have is I have some organic vegetable fertilizer. So what I'm going to do, the compost that I already put down is going to be a great start. But in the planting hole for each individual broccoli, I'm going to put a small handful of this. Um, basically, it's kind of a slow release vegetable fertilizer. So that will help um, just help keep it happy over the season. The other thing, because as I mentioned, broccoli really loves nitrogen, I also have some organic blood meal here. And we're gonna put a little handful of that into each planting hole as well. And I noticed once I started doing that, my broccoli grew a lot bigger, a lot stronger. I got really nice heads. And then with, depending on the variety that you're growing, if you cut the head off, a lot of times you're gonna be rewarded with some extra side shoots. And so you'll have, you'll have your one main head, but then you'll have weeks of broccoli coming in um, on a smaller scale, but still enough to definitely be worth it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that when we plant. And then um, what we're going to do is, I will show you how to put up a really cheap and easy hoop tunnel over the broccoli using um, just simple and inexpensive materials that you can get at your local, um, your local hardware store. I got mine at Home Depot. Pretty much any store like that will carry them. And um, I also got some insect netting, which I believe mine was through Amazon. You can get that um, through many different places. So you can see I have this here. It's got, um, 
It's got really small holes in it. It still lets in all the sunshine. It still lets in the water, but it keeps out insects. And so this is a great option for vegetables that don't need pollination like broccoli. Um, you can see I also use that for my lettuce to keep, um, to keep aphids and other pests out and also to keep my cat out. Another option, if you're having a hard time finding insect netting or you're on a little bit more of a budget, is you could go to your local fabric store, your local craft store, and if you get some tool netting, that would work as well. I haven't actually used that myself, so I'm not sure about the longevity of it. I don't know if it would last more than one season, but that is a really affordable option that is definitely worth a try. All right, so I'm gonna get started prepping the bed. So you can see as I plant the broccoli, I'm gonna put a handful of the two amendments that I mentioned. For me, it's gonna be an organic, um, basically all-purpose vegetable fertilizer and organic blood meal. I'm gonna put a small handful of each into the hole with the broccoli. And um, depending on your soil, the amendments that you need may be a little bit different but that's what we're gonna do. And so let's get started. Okay, so you can see here that one thing I did was I laid out all my broccoli plants where I want them to go before I'm actually gonna plant anything. I have an eight by four inch, um, or, I'm sorry. I have an eight by four foot raised bed here. And um, I'm putting basically three rows of broccoli plants down the bed and there's gonna be four plants in each row. I kind of staggered them so they're not directly lined up. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the varieties I'm gonna be planting. Now my tried and true bro broccoli type is Arcadia. I love it and it has always been successful for me. This year, none of the seed companies that I buy from um, had it in stock. They all said out of stock coming soon. And so I don't know if that's going to come in stock by the time I need it or not. So I went ahead and decided to try a couple new varieties. Um, this one here is called Solstice, which the main reason that I decided to try this one is because it's an open pollinated broccoli variety. Most of the broccoli varieties that are really popular now are not open pollinated. Um, their hybrids, which there's nothing wrong with hybrids. Hybrids can be great plants, but just um, we're trying to move towards being a little more self-sustainable. And so I wanted to try out a broccoli variety that I would be able to save seeds from. Now, when you have a hybrid plant, you can go ahead and save seeds from that. They will most likely still grow. You would still get a broccoli plant, but you're not guaranteed to get the same plant because um, a hybrid is a result of two types of broccoli, a, a broccoli hybrid in this case is a result of two types of broccoli being crossed with each other. The, the resultant plant has characteristics from both parents. And now when you get, when you save seeds from that, um, that crossed plant, you don't know what you're gonna end up with. You could end up with something like either of the original parents. You could, if you get lucky, end up with something like the plant you started with. It could be something completely different. You don't really know. And so if you want to save seeds and know that you're getting the same plant, you want to go with um, an open pollinated or an heirloom variety. Um, Solstice is, a highly recommended open pollinated variety. So I'm gonna give it a try. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna try saving seeds from it this year, we'll see what happens. Um, but I wanted to give that one a try and see how I like the variety. The other variety that I'm going to be trying is called Eastern Magic. That was recommended by the seed companies that I purchased from as an alternative to Arcadia. So I'm gonna give that one a try and we will, um, we'll see what happens. I'll check back in with you as the growing season goes on and I'll let you know my opinion on the two varieties. And depending on where you're growing, you may like totally different varieties than I do. Arcadia seems to work really well for me. It does really well in my growing in my growing environment, but where you're growing, you might like a different variety, might be completely different. So anyway, I will let you know how I like these varieties, how they do for me. So we're gonna go ahead and plant this one. This is a solstice plant right here. We'll plant this one, and then I'm going to, um, after we do this one, I'll go into a time lapse. So you can see, you can see me plant the whole bed without having to watch the whole long process. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to put my gloves on. People say there's two types of gardeners, gardeners who use gloves and gardeners who don't. I am usually one of the gardeners who does not like gloves. I like to feel the dirt in my hands and I like to really feel what I'm doing. But since I'm going to be working with fertilizers, I'd rather not get those on my hands. So I am going to wear my gloves now. So let's go ahead. We're going to dig a hole for this plant. Just have a little trowel here. You want to dig it a little bigger than, um, than the size of your root ball, the size of your pot because that will allow you to, um, to really work the fertilizer in to the surrounding area because as your plant grows, its root system is going to expand quite a bit and you want it to have access to the nutrients that it needs as its roots go out. All right, so we're just gonna put a little handful of this organic fertilizer in here and I'm just gonna kind of fluff it into the dirt. And then we'll do the same thing with our blood meal. of that there. 
And you definitely don't want to overdo it with the blood meal because plants can have problems from too much nitrogen. Now, it's tough to do too much nitrogen when you um, have a brassica plant like broccoli, but it is still possible. And so if you have soil that has really high nitrogen already, you may not even need to add that. Um, my soil when I started here was not very good. And over the years of gardening here, I've gradually built it up to the point where it's pretty decent soil now. Um, and so depending on what I'm planting, I don't always add nitrogen, but with a broccoli plant, I still do just because they're such heavy feeders. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our little tag here, um, especially because I'm growing two different varieties this year. And actually, no, I'm growing three different varieties. I have one Arcadia plant because I had two seeds left that were several years old. So I planted them and one of them germinated. So I do have one of my classics too. So I just wanna be able to tell them apart and see how each one does this year. So I'm just gonna make sure that I label each one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put you into a time lapse now and you can see me plant the rest of the broccoli just how I planted this one. And then, <clears throat> then I'll meet you back here as soon as we're done and I'll show you how to put up the hoop tunnel to protect your broccoli from pests. All right, so we have all our broccoli planted now and I went ahead and I watered it in really well. So the next thing that we need to do to make sure that we have a successful broccoli harvest is that we need to protect it from pests. Broccoli has a few pests. For me, the biggest problem is the cabbage worm, um, which is actually a caterpillar from a little white moth that flies around the garden. And so the best way that I have found to prevent against the cabbage worm is to cover up the broccoli as soon as it's planted so that the moth can never get to it to lay the eggs. Basically, you wanna do this the same day you plant your broccoli because if that moth gets in and lays eggs on the broccoli before you have it covered and then you go ahead and cover it all you've done is you've trapped that pest in with your broccoli and you've kept out any beneficial insects that could maybe help you a little bit with your problem so you want to go ahead and do that as soon as you get it planted um, so I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to put up a, a really easy and inexpensive hoop tunnel so what you're going to need depending on the size of your bed that may change how many of these you need my bed is eight feet long and so I am going to have eight of these little, these are um, one foot long rebar. Um, I'm not sure what they're called. One foot long pieces of rebar that I just got at Home Depot. Basically, I'm going to set them up in pairs. So I'm gonna have four on each side of the length of my bed. The other thing from um, your local home improvement store that you're going to want is a length of PVC pipe. Um, at my local Home Depot, these came in 10 foot lengths, which is a little bit longer than I need for the width of my bed. Um, I need eight feet. And so I just brought these home and I just used a little handsaw and cut two feet off the end of them. So I have these eight foot long PVC pipes, which you can see, um, let's see it's hollow on the end there. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take these rebar, you're gonna put um, every so often, like every 18 inches to two feet or so, you're gonna pound it into the ground so that you have about two inches or so sticking up out of the ground. Then you're gonna take this PVC pipe and you're gonna slide it. That'll hold it in place and you're gonna slide the other end this is gonna make a lot more sense when I actually do it, but I'm just um, giving you a quick overview of what materials you're gonna need. So basically when you're at the store and you're buying rebar and you're buying PVC, one thing you wanna do is you wanna carefully look at the end of your rebar. Some of them have little things sticking off the end, so it's a lot, it's a lot wider and that makes it a lot harder to get over your PVC pipe. So I went through all the pieces of rebar and I found the ones that didn't have any extra pieces coming off the end. I got the ones that were just as narrow as possible so that my PVC could easily slide over them. But what I would recommend doing at the store is once you've collected your rebar, take that over to the PVC section and make sure that you can slide the PVC onto the rebar because you're going to need to do that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna show you how I put um, this rebar into the ground and put the PVC on top of it. And then I'll set up a time lapse so that you can see me set up the whole hoop tunnel. Okay, so I've got the rebar positioned here um, on the outside of my raised bed here. And you could certainly use a hammer for this, but honestly, I have smashed my finger more times with a hammer than I have with a rock. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pound this into the ground. You wanna pound it in until you have just a couple inches sticking up. So you can see there's about two inches sticking up there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this PVC pipe here and I'm gonna slide it over here onto the rebar. Um, normally I would wait until I had all the rebar in before doing this, but just so that you can see how it works. And then you would take the other end of the PVC 
is going to go into the piece of rebar on the other side. So I'm going to set you up in a time lapse so that you can see me set up the whole hoop tunnel. So here you can see I'm working on covering up our new hoop tunnel with insect netting. This is a little bit of a tricky task. The easiest way that I found to do it, as you'll see here, first you have to figure out which way is the long way and the short way. And then you want to basically weigh down one end of it. You can see I'm just using a rock here. Then you want to stretch out the other end, get that end weighed down too. Once you have the two ends weighed down, then it will kind of stay in place a little bit more and be a lot easier to manage. So as you can see, I'm working on weighing the ends down here, and then you want to secure all the corners. When I did this, I just basically grabbed some, some decent sized rocks that I had lying around the garden, plus some old boards. You can use uh, really anything that'll weigh it down. Um, if you do use rocks like I did, you just wanna make sure that you are not using rocks with sharp or jagged edges, because this insect netting will tear pretty easily. And you definitely don't want to have to worry about replacing it. And you don't want holes that insects can get in through. So here you can see I'm weighing down the corners. And once you get this basically set up, you want to go through and adjust it. You want it to be pretty tight, um, as tight as you can get it, especially if you're going to be watering through this. When it's kind of loose, um, <clears throat> when it's kind of loose and you water with a hose, what's going to happen is the water will kind of pool on there and drip off the edge. If you want to make sure that the water really goes through when you use a hose, you want to make it nice and tight and then the water will go through a lot more easily. All right, so as you can see, we got our broccoli planted. We got it nicely covered so it's protected from cabbage moths and cabbage worms and any other pests that um, might possibly try to eat it. And so I hope that this video will show you that you can actually grow broccoli. I know it's a little bit of a challenging vegetable uh, compared to some other really easy ones. It has kind of a reputation of being a little bit tricky, but it is definitely worth, if you love broccoli, it's definitely worth the effort that it takes. And honestly, once you know what to do, how to, um, how to keep it safe, how to really give it what it needs, it's actually not that hard to grow. And so I really hope that this video will encourage you to try broccoli. And if you've tried any of the broccoli varieties that I mentioned in this video, the ones that are new to me, I'm trying Eastern Magic this year for the first time and I'm trying Solstice for the first time, just leave a comment and let me know how they did for you. I would love to hear how those did for you. If you have any other great broccoli varieties to recommend, definitely let me know. You know that Arcadia is my tried and true favorite, but I could not find the seeds this year. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get it next year, but in the meantime, we'll try some new varieties and maybe I'll even end up with a new favorite. Just leave a comment and let me know how your broccoli is done. Um, if you have any other tips for growing broccoli, um, I'm in Connecticut. If you're in a different area of the country, you might have a completely, completely separate set of struggles. And so if you have any other tips for growing broccoli, definitely leave them in the comments. So everyone feel free to go and check the comments and get some more information from other gardeners who might be gardening in other parts of the country. I would love to see you again. Thank you so much for spending time with me and I hope that we all have a great harvest this year. Bye.